Woo! Get your tickets, ladies and gentlemen. Roll up. Come on. Two tickets for you, sir. Ma'am, two tickets. Boom. Thanks for coming. Guys, welcome to the gun show. <laughs> Welcome to chapter 177 of the 35th most popular podcast in the country on the streaming service Spotify. We did it. I started out this year and I said, God help us. If we aren't in the top 35, I'm going to end the podcast. And we slipped in. Thank God. So guys, the podcast lives on. Phew, dodged a bullet. Um, bit of a flex to start the episode. Two flexes, three actually. One, two, and then number 35. That's three flexes. I could get at my dick and make it 12, but I'm not going to do that, okay? One for every inch, baby. <laughs> God, I've come in too hot today, guys. Let's tone it down. Let's just tone this down, guys. I'm putting on an act. This is a facade. I'm just so pumped up about the new World Gym merch, okay? Right now, stop what you're doing. Are you busy? Not anymore. Listen up. Head to lukekidgel.com and get ready for a big summer of shredding because the new summer World Gym merch is here, okay? People said they wanted singlets. I got countless requests. People saying we need singlets for summer. And I said, mate, tell me about it, okay? So what did I went and do? I went and got, boom, Charcoal singlets. I've always wanted to do charcoal merch. I've never had the confidence because everyone told me they're not going to sell as well as black. And I was like, no, you know what? Fuck it. I've always wanted to do charcoal shirts. I wanted to make something uh, that I'd wear in the world gym, uh, which I have. I wore it this morning, actually. Honestly, this stinks. I've already done. It's Tuesdays, dudes. So I do two workouts on Tuesday. I've already done my first workout. Shredded it in this with my bro. A bit of a home gym session. And then I'll well gym it after the podcast. That's what I do on Tuesdays, guys. Okay. And I um, don't worry. I don't touch a weight. I'm not a coward. Okay. Uh, all, all body weight stuff. And the only equipment I do use, I, I, I'm a sucker for a chin up bar, but I would say like that's out in the world, you know, that I, I when I say a chin up bar, it's a pole in his garage. So it is the world. I'm incorporating the world around me, which is the whole movement. And uh, I will admit, I, I do use a skipping rope. But fuck it, you could do that in the world, you know? Get a fern, skip it. So it, that's a technicality. But guys, it's here. Well, Gym merch has arrived, lukehidgel.com. And uh, also, so this is for your session, the new tank top, right? Plus we restocked the t-shirts because they're sold out. But get this, get this up, yeah. Bottle openers, perfect for well Gym recovery. You know, as the leader of this fitness revolution, it's all about balance, okay? Healthy diets are all about balance. So what do you do? You, you smash 40 minutes of the well gym and then you have 40 beers afterwards. It's called balance. Look it up, okay? Kung Fu warriors speak of it. So therefore, it must be true. So uh, yeah, this will help you open said 40 beers. The well gym bottle opener, uh, it is a kettlebell shaped, which I'm aware is a piece of gym equipment but uh, guys, this is the only gym equipment you'll ever need, okay? I, I wanted to get the, I, you know what? I wanted to get the gym equipment themed uh, one. You know, Meg was like, oh, do we really want to get something that's kettlebell shaped? And I said, absolutely, fucking lootly okay? Because this is world gym equipment, all right? You, you don't see these in a gym, those fucking junkies with their protein powder. <laughs> It's so funny this week. In the Luke and Lewis Discord, there's like a well gym and gym gym chat. And I always go into the gym gym chat and just rattle all those fucking junkies, man. Those those mirror self-loving junkies on their protein powder. And nothing gets gets a, a gym gym person more shook than calling them a junkie for having over-the-counter protein powder. Now, guys, I'm a comedian, right? And uh, last time I checked, that was a fucking zinger. And yet people still proceeded to correct me uh, that, guys, protein powder is not actually uh, meth. <laughs> and I was like, you're wrong, okay? So if you do, if you know, if you're one of those like, oh, I'm just going to mix it in, like you're a junkie, all right? Well, Jim's all about natural physique. 
um, getting home, ripping a beer, ripping a steak, and um, just straight up chilling and grinding is kind of like the balance we do. So, guys, LukeKidgel.com, and um, yeah, get amongst the world gym movement this summer. It's pretty much the way to go in this post-COVID world. You don't want to be risking it at a gym, you know? All those fucking coffin junkies in there. Get out in the world and you'll uh, you'll reap the rewards. So, uh, yeah, and look the part, LukeKidgel.com. And thank you so much to everyone who's already got one. It's so fucking cool um, that you guys still support what I do after all these years. It's very kind and, um, yeah, helps keep the dream alive. So I appreciate it. Um, now did say that, uh, we're the 35th most popular podcast in the country. Sure. Huge flex. Probably should have saved that for flex chat. Hang on. I'll, I'll do it again. Guys, 35th most popular podcast in the country. Boom. And thank you to, uh, you guys that make that possible. That's, isn't that fucking wild? Like this is a, you know, it's a fun podcast, not going to lie, but I'm, I'm not going to come in here and say it's, <laughs> it's definitely not the best one. It's not the best one. Like it's not, it might be your favorite, right? But objectively, it's not the best podcast. Now, most podcasts wouldn't come out there and say that. Most podcasts would be like, we're the best. We're not here. We're, we are mid to high tier level quality podcasts, depending on your taste. Pretty niche. You know, it's just a guy chatting about his week. I started off by bragging about my cock size. Um, I don't know what other podcasts do. I don't listen to many. So I'm not really sure what the standard is these days, but apparently, guys, we're 35th, so it's not high. Apparently, podcasting is the one medium, I guess, that just has never stepped it up because if I'm still 35, and that's that's really... Uh, it must be discouraging to other Australian podcasts in the top 100, that this is 35. They must be going, God, we're doing something wrong. Uh, <laughs> but thank you. I appreciate it. It's very cool to see. And uh, guys, we grew 200% in the UK this year. That's what my Spotify told me. So either the UK just discovered Spotify or we are popping off overseas. Maybe it was COVID. Maybe they're like, let's just listen to some white Australian bloke talk about his non-issues. And maybe that's what's popping over in the UK right now. But either way, guys, we're trending there. And uh, thank you very much to our um, our international, our neighbours. Um, what were we calling them last week? Guests, sorry. Our, our international guests. Um, and we had a quick little question come in regarding uh, last week's announcement to uh, welcome our international guests. Um, this one came in from... I think it was Byron. So thank you very much uh, for emailing at podcast at gmail.com. He goes, in your last podcast, you said uh, all international listeners were guests. If so, does this include Kiwis? If not, uh, what are they? I'm thinking we call them our neighbors, our neighbor listeners. Yeah, sorry, that's where I got neighbors from because I read this email earlier. <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. I, I agree. So anyone international is um is obviously welcome guests there that we're hosting them thank you very much for being here we'll definitely you guys get served first uh because you're the guest like if you kind of do something wrong or do a boo-boo uh, my parents won't get mad at you to your face they'll get mad at me after you leave because you're the guest so that's fair so thank you for being here but please just take your shoes off and um don't say anything fucked around my mum appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so yeah, uh, a bit, but also welcome to now to our new neighbors. We're calling all our New Zealand listeners, which is, I think the third biggest dem demographic on the fourth, you guys are fourth. I'm sorry. The U S and the UK are trumping you in the analytics. I'm not going to lie. You're, I don't know why I said trumping. Apparently trumping is now, um, just a verb for fucking on everything. Apparently, in my head, at least, <laughs> you are you're being owned by the UK and the US. But New Zealand, for a small nation, you're coming fourth in uh, the memoirs analytics, and that's great. And I think fifth, who knows? It's a it's a drastic drop. So if you're from a place that's not the UK, the US, or New Zealand, 
and you're an international listener of this podcast, you might be the only one. Like I'm pretty sure there was one person from Ethiopia that tunes in every week and shout out to you. Thank you. Uh, what's going on in Ethiopia? Let me know. Let me know at Luke Kidgel podcast at gmail.com. Um, so yeah, Spotify wrapped was a thing. And I know I'm a little bit late because I did miss last week's podcast. I, po- I apologize. Uh, I was back on stage last Tuesday when I usually do the episode. And uh, I really wanted to make sure that first gig back was good. Um, I haven't been on stage for, I worked out it was 263 days of me not talking in a microphone to strangers, which is bizarre because that's my job. And I don't know about you, but was anyone after COVID nervous about going back to work? Oh, so nervous, guys. I haven't been nervous to go on a stage maybe since like my special, but they were good nerves. They were like butterflies and excitement nerves. This was like first 10 gigs I ever did level shitting myself that everything was going to go wrong and I'm not funny. Like I was, I felt sick all day thinking about it. I just, and then I got there and I did it. Like I was like, oh, I'm just back at the comics lounge. Just a gig, Tuesday night, new material night. Sweet. I saw a few people from TV. They didn't, I'm not going to say they bombed, right? You know, a few, I'm not going to mention names, but a few comics off the television, household names. Um, they were also, let's just say, working out new material. And it made me feel a lot better about myself because I thought, oh no, I'm just going to go up there with like five minutes of new shit that I've written over COVID. I've never tested it. No idea if it's funny. I don't, like, because I've been Twitch streaming, you know? I've been just screaming egg into a microphone and just like playing Tony Hawk. I've lost in my brain what funny is at this point. It's just slosh. My brain's kind of just sloshing around down around there and occasionally um, I'll just scream like you just some word that's funny. I spent about an hour pulling a lever on Lego Star Wars couple of weeks ago on Twitch. It's on the Pro Gamer channel. Terrific content. We cut the best five minutes of the hour that I spent pulling a lever that gave you little virtual coins on a video game. So my brain's mush was the point. And that's why I was nervous. I knew I had to spend a whole day Tuesday to kind of nail it back together, try and tape it up, just like get it at least functioning to the point where I'm coherent to strangers in a microphone. Um, And it went surprisingly well a few people have messaged me asking how the first gig back went i was so excited and i this is going to sound so lame and wholesome but i didn't realize how much i loved my fucking job it's the coolest job in the world like obviously there's not every part to it is incredible but being on stage oh damn i got off and i was like i want to go back on i don't know how to leave i didn't even have anything to say i just Maybe I'm just an attention whore. I don't know. I fucking loved it. I was like, oh my God, I'm in spotlights and there's a hundred people staring at me. This is where I'm in my element. I don't know what happened, but I fucking loved it. And um, yeah, it was funny. The crowd was was weird though, because it was like socially distanced comedy. And I never haven't done that. Haven't performed since March 13th. My last gig was like a corporate gig that I did in South Bank to some lawyers so I put it this way, I was, I, I didn't end on a high. You know, it was a fine gig. I remember it going okay. You know, I got paid. That's all you want out of a corporate gig. You want that money to hit your account quicker than you regret doing the gig is kind of how a corporate gig works. Because um, it's people who are like, they're at a lunch or they're with their work colleagues and they're all in suits and they have to go back to work and like half an hour, so they're kind of hating their lives. And they go, and now we have a comedian. And you're like, ha lads, what up? I didn't go to uni, suck shit. My life's better than yours. Yippee. But they're also, you guys get paid three times as much. Anyway, we're all having fun. So, and you have to go up there and entertain people that you have nothing in common with. I have nothing in common with a lawyer, okay? I got mush brain. He's got cocaine brain, you know? I, I scream egg. You know, he screams nothing. He's pro- he probably is boring dude. I don't know. I don't want to trash lawyers out there, but I'm, you know, you, I've met a few of you. Lighten up. That's all. Anyway, <laughs> bit of a generalization, but anyway. So 
First gig back was good. Crowd, uh, crowds uh, have forgotten what to do. I was, I went, I watched most of the night of a lot of other comedians and the crowd did not want to be crowd worked upon. I love having a chat to the crowd. If you guys have seen my videos online, you know, I bloody just love having a chat. It's one of my favorite parts of doing stand up is improv and just asking people about their day and trying to make that into something funny. And I tried it. The gist, I watched like five people before me try it and I briefly tried it. And then I was like, this crowd does not want to be spoken to. And fair enough. Like everyone in the audience has been locked in their house for six months. Month, Jeff, I can't speak. Uh, slosh brain. Everyone in the audience has been locked in their house for six months. Fair enough. I, I don't want to be spoken to either, to, to be honest. Like if, if someone tried to speak to me in the street right now, I'd be like, Mate, I've left the house. Give me that. And then that was the vibe. People were like, we're here. Don't fucking talk to me though. Don't look at me. I want to sit here, drink a beer and have a bit of a laugh. Not too much of a laugh, by the way, the audience that I performed to, not too much. There was a maximum laughter level. I mean, Husey was on the lineup the first night I went back, right? He went on right before me. Oh, Lewis went on before me. So pff, that was easy to follow. I'm kidding. Lewis went great. Um, <laughs> but uh, Husey was on before Lewis and I. And, um, and you know, you'd think, you know, a Melbourne suburban, suburban, I can't fucking talk today or any day. You'd think a Melbourne suburban crowd would be like, Husey's here. This is what we came for. They were just like, oh, grouse, go off the telly. Fuck yeah. And then we're just like so content and so happy to be there. And I think audiences have gotten so used to watching content in their own homes that they, um, they're they like, that was funny. Afterwards, like a bunch of people were like, that was really funny. That was so good, man. Loved, loved your set. And I was like, well, tell your face, okay? But I appreciate you coming, but God, that they were a pretty quiet audience just in general throughout the night. But I guess it's the whole thing of like, you're so spread out. When you're like packed into a small comedy club and it's pumping, and there's people laughing next to you. I guess it's kind of contagious, and the vibe's there, and it's just so fun to be in that room. But when you're all spread out, I kind of understand why people were just like, this is a bit weird. And it was a bit weird, but I'm doing a couple more gigs this week. Um, the Loogies is on sale, the Luke and Lewis end of your award show. I have no idea at this point. It's been on sale for literally six hours. Oh, no, like... Oh, 12 hours, but the episode isn't up yet. Uh, the video episode wasn't even up yet, and it's half sold out. So I don't even know if there'll be any tickets left by the time this comes out, but there might be. So go check that out if you want to watch us do uh, comedy again. I'll be doing stand-up on December 23rd, and that's going to be interesting because I need a new set by December 23rd. So wish me luck. I'm going to be a big writing boy in the next couple of weeks, and... Yeah. Well, oh, I keep moving on. I was going to talk about Spotify wrapped. People kept saying uh, last week when everyone was posting their Spotify wraps, like there's always the people like, oh, no one gives a fuck about your Spotify rap. All right. I, post my, I posted mine because no one asked. I was like, oh, no one's asked me. Boom. That's what the internet's for. I'll just put that information out there. Oh, what? No one cares. Boom. That's what Instagram's for, idiot. Why are you on there? Like, no one gives a shit about anyone. Everyone's there to post their own stuff, right? It's a look at me type platform. That's what the gram's all about. Um, and yet there's people on there going, no one cares. And I don't really get much of that because obviously everyone cares about my elite 14-year-old girl music taste. But um, I just saw it going around a lot on other people's stories. Like, no one cares about you. Spotify wrapped. Guys, <laughs> I got a confession. I cared. I was really interested. I loved it. I love that day. I, I love seeing into the phones of other people. There's something juicy about it. It's like, oh, what, what have you been putting in your ears? You, you know, you dirty bastard. You know, you'll just see some bloke like he's got Foo Fighters, fucking, you know, like I don't know what's like a cool band like Tame Impala, The Jungle Giants, just like cool shit. They're listening to, like DMAs, and then at the end, he's just got like you know, fucking Miley Cyrus or whatever. And it's just like, 
Whoa, and that's the best shit. You just learn you learn a lot about people by their Spotify raps. And you'll you I learned a lot about myself. Um Machine Gun Kelly was obviously number one. I'm obsessed with his new album. Of course it was always gonna be. Um Young Blood was second, which I was surprised about because I, I mainly listen to his features. I, I I do, I am a fan of his music. I think that it's sick that the dude just wears a dress and does whatever the fuck he wants. That's so, there's nothing tougher in 2020 than just whacking on a dress and singing punk music. Both of those things aren't stereotypically cool things to do. And it's just like, I, I just respect that. You know, other people are like, he's weird. I'm like, that not that the appeal? You know, like... If everyone was like everyone else, then that's boring to me. So, yeah, I really like him. I think there's a bunch of new artists coming up in that scene that's uh, pretty cool. There's real, like, California-type pop punk movement happening, I guess, at the moment. Like, led, pro- you know, probably by Travis Barker and Machine Gun Kelly working on that album together. But there's a bunch of other cool shit. It's pretty cool. Um, and then Kanye was my third. That That was a bit of an oddball. I was surprised at Kanye. I don't know why. I just, I've, I listened to a lot of Kanye clearly, but I didn't think I did. You know, I didn't think I listened to that much Kanye. I'm definitely a hits man. I wouldn't even know he, many of his album tracks. So I must've been pumping stronger a lot this year. But what I was disappointed in was my rap doesn't count my offline music when I go, when I smash the world gym. Pretty much when I go on my runs is where I listen to most of my music. So I load it up and then I guess it becomes an offline play. So I'm not sure if it factors that in because I listened to a lot of Blink and stuff. I was just surprised that I, I didn't have any of the old pop punk bands in there this year. But um, man, I was I was loving the Spotify wrapped like whole thing. I, I enjoy uh, seeing what people listen to and I also found a few new bands and artists and stuff that I was checking out, which was pretty cool. Cause like, I'd see what my mates were into and I was like, man, I've heard of them. Maybe I should give them a spin. And since then I have, and I uh, have not regretted some of it, you know, some have been awful, you know, and you listen to it. You're like, why the fuck do my friends listen to this? But you'd never, you'd never judge people guys for what's on their Spotify rap. It's that simple. It goes back to the age old uh, thing of it's not a you pod. It's not an us pod. It's an iPod, so fuck off. You know, nothing worse when people back in the day used to scroll through my iPod Nano and be like, I hate all your music. And you're like, well, lucky it's not on your device. Isn't, what a relief for you that this is my personal property and you're in here judging my interests, okay? So that's that's the thing, let's... Let's not, let's move past that. We're not judging people for what they listen to anymore. And I was pretty shocked at how many people came out of the woodwork, uh, particularly dudes, and were just like, dude, straight up, Machine Gun Kelly's new album rips. Even like dudes I wouldn't expect, like Billy Darcy, comedian Sydney, he's like, bro, he fucking rips, doesn't he? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, man, he absolutely. But I just wasn't expecting that much of an underground kind of movement happening. I guess he, it was the number one album. So fair enough. I guess it's popular. I'm not that cool for listening to it. You're not like niche if you listen to the number one album on the Billboard charts on repeat. No one's like, fuck, mate. Luke just like breaks new shit, man. So ahead of the curb. <laughs> um, what else has been going on with me? Uh, Reese and I have just been crushing it with the videos leading up to the end of the year. I've uh, been putting in a lot of work uh, to get some stuff set up for next year regarding Luke and Lewis. Oh, actually, just just on race. So, guys, editor Reese, you may have heard me talk about him. Uh, we work together now twice a week. You know, he comes to my house and he does the podcast. He will do some main channel stuff. He often does a lot of the gamer channel videos now, um, most of them. Any podcast clips you might see, it's all race. He's, you know, making thumbnails, memes, does a lot of great editing for me. And I've realized we've been working together for maybe a year, but I guess because of COVID in person, you know, maybe for only two or three months. In that time, he is here for maybe eight hours a day, Sundays, sometimes nine. It's a long day. Who knows? 
and I checked with Meg before I started recording the podcast. Reese might be a robot. We're not sure. <laughs> we we can could not confirm or deny. There is evidence of him. There's a lot of evidence on the side of him being a robot and being some kind of AI in, you know, some kind of like device maybe planted in my home by the government, kind of like a home pod to spy on you. But instead he shot into my emails and said he could edit some clips. There's a real potential that it's a genuine, like he could be a national security threat, threat, threat. Um, <laughs> he could, but there's also a little bit of evidence, a small minute about of evidence over the other side, which is perhaps he's human. Cause once I saw him scratch his head and that's the only evidence I have that he could be human. Other than that, everything leans towards robot. And I've never brought this up with him. So the, I'm currently talking about him behind his back. Don't worry. I'm going to call him right now. Um, just to clear things up. Here's my main bit of evidence before I call race to just clear up if he's like real or a robot. I've never seen him piss, ever. He's been coming to my house for weeks now since COVID kind of wrapped up. The dude's never pissed. He's here for nine hours a day. So at first I thought maybe he's just constantly dehydrated and has a great bladder, you know, but he catches the train here. So I know he commutes for like over an hour to get here. So he, even when he rocks up at my house, he hasn't pissed for an hour unless he's pissing at the station. I have no idea. I'm assuming not. And then he would go home and catch an, an hour home. So he will not piss for 12 hours straight. Maybe just has a strong bladder. I don't know not have a bladder that is up to that level of capabilities at all. I'm nowhere near that. I'm pissing probably three or four times in that time span. I, I also drink a lot of water and I've got a, Weak as literally pierced bladder. It just, I'm a tap. I'm not in that. I'm like a, I'm like a leaking faucet pretty much. But then I go, okay, maybe just doesn't drink much. Recently, I've been kind of watching him. He, he'll he have a drink bottle next to him. He'll be editing all day. And man, it's great for me, you know, because I, I ain't paying him to piss. All right, I'm paying him to fucking edit. <laughs> I, I Seriously though, it's getting concerning and he's obviously, he's never shat. He's never done a piss, but he, I see him consuming food and liquid all day. Where does it go? I'm assuming into some kind of engine or to oily sockets or who knows, but I'm going to, I'm going to give him a call. So this is the first time you guys will probably have met editor Reese. Um, I have no idea if he's going to pick up. Maybe he's been powered down for the day. Who knows? I'm not sure. Maybe he goes back to a factory. Maybe he's not even going to pick up. We'll see. But i um, currently about to call my editor just to get it all out there. And look, he can be honest with me. If he's a robot, it's not going to change my position. Okay? I'm still going to keep hiring him. And that's fine. But I, I just want to get to the bottom of it pretty much. And for you guys as well, you know, it's good to know if you have an ed a robot kind of um, editing your podcast. Hmm. Can we get if it's a phone ringing or him communicating with his robot friends in Morse code? Sorry, I couldn't get to your call. Please leave your name and number and I'll get back to you shortly. Thank you. Reese, what's up? It's Luke. Um, just calling you regarding uh, if you're real or not. Anyway, see you Thursday. Call me back. <laughs> bit of a weird one to get from your boss in the middle of the day um <laughs> has anyone else's uh boss ever called them uh, just ever called them up middle of the day to ask them if they exist or not anyway that's kind of the working relationship we have we're, we're cool with stuff like that we just kind of like call each other up like are you breathing whatever but i don't know if he's breathing or maybe he's powered down for the day. Not sure. But guys, I put it this way. That that doesn't bode well for him, does it? Uh, the evidence is stacking up and leaning towards robots. So Reese, 
I'll give you a chance to defend yourself perhaps next week on the podcast. Um, or maybe, maybe I should give him one of those online tests. You know, when you kind of like log into a website and it will be like, are you a robot? And you've got to like, he's got to tell me which one contains a bicycle, which square contains a bicycle in it. And you've got to like click all the ones that have a part of the bicycle. Maybe that's the test. That's foolproof. Because if he's a robot, apparently, you know, that everyone knows that just stumps robots. Bicycle or bus stop or car related uh, questions. Often just ticking a box will just throw off a robot, apparently. So, but it's odd that he can edit videos so proficiently, yet that would stump him. Anyway, guys, not sure what's happening. But, um, yeah, good on him, though. Every robot's got to hold down his job. Um, by the way, guys, Reese is a great editor, great guy. I'm not, I'm not discriminating against robots here. I just want to know. It's it's good to know. I think it's it's one of those things. It's uh, you want to get on top of it before it gets out of hand. If you are employing a robot, that's all. And and you guys will understand that. Um, but who doesn't piss? It's twelve hours, mate. You, you know you know who doesn't piss? Psychos and robots. So I fucking hope he's a robot. Because otherwise, poor, should I be letting such a strong bladder into my household? Because, whew, crazy. Uh, what else was on my bloody list to talk about, guys? Plug the old World Gym merch. Um, is Reese a robot? Oh, guys, new podcast email, sound effects. Now, I haven't heard these. Uh, Reese has lined them up. He was like, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop. Um, he uh, lined them up for me. He's chucked them on the uh, roadcaster here. Now, I asked you guys a couple of days ago to shoot me through new podcast email jingles. We love easy to remember podcast email jingles here. There was this one from a couple of weeks ago. Uh, very easy to remember. Simple. Luke Kidgel Podcast at gmail.com. Boom. Already you're like, oh. Where's the email? Oh, Luke Kitchell Podcast at gmail.com. Boom, boom. But you don't type in the boom, boom. That's purely for our jingle effect. So uh, I gave a couple of a cappella uh, versions for you guys to work with, any music producers who may listen. Um, and we got a few back. And I haven't heard these ones yet. Reese were, said these were the best two. Now, um, has he written who... In. I, I think I've got, I do want to credit the people, obviously. Uh, the first one came in from Will Smith. Damn, took some time off TikTok and YouTube uh, to shoot us an email at lukeidualpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, Will Smith said, g'day Luke. I'm assuming this is the Will Smith because I have no reason to believe it's not. So we must assume. I love your podcast. Here's a little jingle for your email. Also, I've got a flex. I just finished my year 12 exam. Regards, Will Smith. And then he goes, I know it's a pretty cool name. Bit of a flex there from Will. Uh, we get it, mate. You're in ha Hancock. I am legend. I robot. You're a big deal. Sure. Fresh, Fresh Prince was great. And uh, But come on, mate. We heard your music. Uh, other than Switch, give up. So you know, let's let's just not come in gloating about it will but sure it's a cool name it is it's a very hollywood name not even sure if that's actually his real name it's too perfect um i actually knew a guy named will smith once did uh athletics with him great guy from memory but anyway um what what's annoying about this is i don't know which one i've got two jingles here so one guys one of these was sent in by will smith the first one from memory I did an opera a cappella. I just kind of sung from the heart and gave people something to work with with the jingle. So without further ado, this is uh, one of the new podcast, easy to remember jingles. And I'm hearing it for the first time. Okay. Look at your podcast, the I love that. The dun, 
at the end. Let's, I'm going to give that one more listen. This is great. Man, I'm, I sound great here. Compliment Luke below. Hashtag compliment Luke. Come on. Luke did your podcast at gmail.com. Oh, boom. That hits the spot. Man, that's like an afternoon snack on a hot summer's day. Just, ooh, how good. Don't mind if I do. Love that. And uh, this one. There's another one that came in, and I've just, I'm, I apologize. I'm not sure who sent this one in. I uh, oh, I feel so bad not crediting people. Goodness. Um, but this one was sent in by another listener of the show. Thank you very much, whoever sent this in. Maybe it was Will. I forget. Um, or maybe they were both by Will. I'm not sure. But I, I recorded a country style audio. I would say I, I feel like I I remember singing a hillbilly accent. I've forgotten what I said, but um, this one is titled Country Email Jingle. <clears throat> Fan made. Let's do it. Send us an email at lukehedgepodcast.gmail.com. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is the best one. Do you hear that, Meg? How good's that? No. That was fucking good. This is great. <laughs> Whoever said this one in? I mean, I've obviously I've nailed the singing here, but fuck me. Send us an email at lukehedgepodcast.gmail.com. That is the if that's the official jingle, guys. <laughs> All right. This is good. Very good. Yeah. Sorry, Meg uh, Meg's heard that from down the hall and has run up the hall. So I uh, give compliments to the chef, whoever uh, cooked that one up in the studio. Very good. Very strong. Um, so, guys, send us an email, LukeKidgetPodcast at gmail.com. Uh, speaking of people who shot us an email this week, uh, obviously Byron wanted to uh, wanted me to just address the uh, our New Zealand neighbours, and we appreciate that. Here's some more general correspondence um, from Esther. Now, this one, guys... I get this a lot and I just want to address it once and I'm not going to address it again because I've probably been getting about five to ten times a day on Instagram and it, and I <laughs> feel bad, but God, it blows my mind thinking that clearly those five to ten people that message me every day are like, it's probably the first time he's ever heard this. I, this is an original thought. Boom, Luke needs to know. And I appreciate the sentiment, but I am aware of it. Um, Esther's done it as well and thank you for... Uh, making me further aware of it, Esther. She said, hey, Luke, big fan. Your podcast email uh, was very easy to remember thanks to your jingle. Hey, least I could do, Esther. That's what it's all about here. It's all about efficiency. Sure, we spent a month trying to get people to remember the email, but now you just go, send us an email at lukehedgepodcast.gmail.com. Yeah! I'll be flooded this week with emails because if good luck getting that out of your head, you'll be walking along. You might be walking to your local bakery this week. Like, yeah, I'm going to get some donuts. And then you start going, send us an email, look at your back house, a gmail.com. Yeah, God, it's a good sing along. It's like one of those songs that you just, it's like five, six, seven, eight, my birth counting, baby. Have me crazy, my obsession for the Western means all day. If you don't sing that when it comes on, you are what is wrong with the world, okay? That's that's a crime. Um, So, Esther's gone, I'm from Canada, and I don't know how to tell you this, but the world gym is already a thing here. It's been a thing for a while now. Uh, it's a gym chain. That's about it, really. I was listening to your podcast on the way to work and I always pass the billboard for the Well GM gym. So I thought you might want to know. Now, guys, I am aware of this uh, Well Gym chain. To, to be perfectly honest with you, I wasn't aware before I started the movement. I, people forget this This started maybe mid-2018. maybe mid When did we start Luke and Lewis? I think mid-2018 this started. Or 2019. 
I forget when we started the podcast. It started in one of the Luke and Lewis episodes. It, it kind of just happened. I think it was a funny thing I said one day on the Luke and Lewis podcast. I think Lewis was accusing me of not going to the gym. And I was like, dude, the world is my gym. And from then on, it just became a movement. It took a life of its own. And I fell into being a leader of a worldwide fitness revolution. As And that happens. Sometimes you just fall in to leading a generation of hunks. And I didn't mean for that to happen. I never signed up for that, but I've, I've guess I've taken it on. You know, I've taken it in my stride. I'm, I'm just rolling with it. And is it a lot of work? Of course. You know, you've got to, you've got to go out there and set a good example yourself, okay? These guns don't sculpt themselves, okay? It's just like, it's one of those things. I'm an artist. I've said this before. I'm an artist. My body is my canvas. And sometimes I just get in the studio and my studio happens to be the big wide world. And, and it's always been that. I've never been a gym gym guy. It's just something that's true to me. And I think that's what people resonated with. Now, I, I became aware of this. There is a gym chain called the World Gym. Does it disgust me? Absolutely. You know? Are, are they coming in on my turf? Sure. They're trying to make money. I'm starting a revolution. LukeKidgel.com slash merch. Give me more revolutions. <laughs> Give me cha-ching revolutions. Um, give me ching revolutions. I'm not about the money. Okay, guys. I'm not about just can I, can I cash this check, please? I'm not about the cash. Give me just revolutions. And that's it. I'm here to start a revolution. They're clearly just a money hungry gym chain. I've never been there in my life. The first time I saw it was on the Gold Coast. I don't think it's, it's not a thing really in Melbourne, or at least in my area, there's not one. Uh, I think it's a thing, big thing in Queensland and perhaps New South Wales. Um, so yeah, I became aware of it once I started the World Gym, but uh, the the movement I was running was already just full stride ahead. Like it, there was already too much momentum behind it to switch gears or change names. So that's what it is. I, I just want to put it out there. I am aware of this chain. I do I understand why people feel the need to tell me about it. Um, I don't really, but sure, I understand. You know, I understand that people message me outrage. Some people go, this is an outrage. What the fuck? Sure, get that. Some people uh, say, say you should sue these people. I, I, I don't think I'm the person that should be filing a lawsuit, as I assume they did exist before I started this movement. I just wasn't aware of that. <laughs> I didn't really Google it. You know, oh, I didn't duck, duck, go it. I would never cut that out race. I would never say that word. We don't say the G word on the podcast. Yuck, 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 yuck. And guys, if uh, Reese hasn't cut that out, he's malfunctioned because, you know, and robots shouldn't do that. So, um, yeah, thanks for that, Esther. And um, we'll have a few unpopular opinions, etc. next week. But uh, guys, I'm probably going to wrap it up there. A uh, bit of a shorter episode this week. To be honest, we have spent the last couple of weeks uh, planning the Loogies, which is like the end of year Luke and Lewis Awards show. Um, that's been a fucking crazy thing to, because it was originally going to just be a live stream in Lewis's lounge room. And then within a week, it changed from a live stream in a house to a live event and then that changed all our plans. We had to recall everyone who was helping us and switch it. You know, you know, I don't know if you, it's probably hard to explain how much work goes into stuff like that, but uh, it was two weeks of my life that I'll, I'll never get back, but uh, it'll be a lot of fun. So um, yeah, looking forward to the uh, end of the year and uh, it's going to be a pretty exciting end. And um, yeah, thank you very much for making this the, what was it? Top 35 podcast in the country that's sick um appreciate that and don't think i have anything else would love it if you cop some merch and the shows next year i've started to be organized that's another thing that i've been working on too um getting back out there obviously has been one part of it but also organizing a bunch of stuff behind the scenes so hopefully we can do some shows together in person finally uh, next year. So cool. 
Cool, cool, cool. Guys, have a good week. Send us an email. Oh, wait, no, wait. <clears throat> we'll play the intro. Sorry. Send us an email at lukehedgepodcast.gmail.com. Yeah! Send us your flex chats. Send us your unpopular opinions. And um, or just general inquiries like we had there. I love reading general inquiries about the podcast. Uh, thank you very much for listening, guys. I'll see you all next week. Have a good one. Oh, sorry. I forgot. I literally had on my list talk about how forgetful you're becoming. And then I forgot to talk about that. So, fuck, it really proves my point. <laughs> I'm not joking. Um, this week, this is what I want to talk about, man. Oh, Oh my God, before we wrap it up, I need to just vent a little bit at myself. Um, and you guys just need to listen to it. I am getting frustrated out of my mind with the amount of slosh that's just running around in that brain and it's not functioning. I think it's because I'm thinking about 20 things at once. It's me thinking about dropping merch, organizing live shows, doing gigs, writing new stand up, making videos still, and everything in between, I, it, perhaps, and doing three podcasts a week and Twitch streaming. Oh, my God, when you sat out loud, um, I need to quit a few things. Anyway, uh, that guys, that's a, that's another issue. But anyway, there's a lot going on up here what, is what I'm saying. There's a lot just sloshing around. I'm always thinking of different stuff at different times. You know, oh, maybe I could have a social life, and then it sloshes, and I'm like, fuck that. That's for, that's for the week, right? And uh, oh, also, I have to buy my family Christmas presents. Fuck, that's a thing. Damn it. So I forgot about that. <laughs> I'm becoming so forgetful. It's wild. On the weekend, I was trying to be social. Meg went to Sydney. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to catch up with a few friends. Uh, we went to a local bar and I bought a jumper with me. Classic. You know, it, was, it wasn't the warmest night. Uh, it was actually quite cool. So I was like, I'm gonna just going to bring a jumper in case it gets cold. I left the jumper at the pub. And usually when you leave something at the pub, you realize like, oh, I also left two things at the pub. I bought like a Stein glass in which you're supposed to take home. It's like an Oktoberfest Stein glass and you're supposed to keep it uh, and like take it home or whatever and use it at home, I guess. And I forgot that too, but that wasn't a big deal, but I did forget that. And then, cause it, it's kind of foreign concept to just walk out of a pub with a glass, unless you're intentionally stealing a screw in a glass or something like that, which people do, but I'm an honest boy, so I wouldn't do that. So anyway, it's a little bit of a foreign concept. That I forgive myself for forgetting. I was like, you know what? Not a huge loss. I've lost myself a glass. I'm sure I can buy another one one day. <laughs> but then my jumper, I'm looking for it the next morning, and it's not anywhere around the house. I'm so forgetful that I forgot where I forgot it. Now that's a... a wrap your head around that. I could not remember even the last time I had the jumper and it was in the last 18 hours. So I'm not going well at this point. Then I eventually remember, oh, I, I took it to the pub. It must be at the pub. So I call the, the place and I go walk past, pick it up. It's obviously embarrassing. They're, they're starting for the day and I'm coming back the next morning to get my belongings that I left there. Humiliating stuff. So then I uh, head out again. And I was uh, catching up with our old radio producer, went and had lunch uh, with James. Great bloke, love James. We're having a good old chat, clearly, because we got to leave and we're walking down the street. I do the pocket feel, but I've done it too late. I've done it five minutes too late. When you stand up out of a chair, when you're out, always go phone, keys, wallet. And in my case, poor, poor, because I'm 14. So I'm like, phone, keys, poor, poor. And I go, again, I'm like, I'm slapping my, I'm like, where's the, I go look at my back pocket. I'm like, where's the, what? I don't, fuck, no wallet. Awesome. Now this is the second time in under 24 hours or the third time technically that I've forgotten something. Great. Awesome. Woohoo! So I rush back to the place. Now they're closing up because it's Sunday and it's 5 p.m. They're closing up the place. We're like, oh my God, they're closed. Damn it. And I could literally see my wallet on the couch. Like, do you know how frustrating that is? Looking through a pub window, seeing your belongings 
and it was like a brewery. So they weren't open again until Wednesday. And I'm just like, God damn it. And we're walking down the street. Sure enough, the biggest fluke, we see the girl who's been working behind the bar all afternoon. She's getting on the tram and she's like, oh, you boys still around. And I was like, oh, I left my wallet in there. I felt so bad. She had to go back into the security of the actual brewery where they brew the beer. She like took us down a back street and then the security place of like the whole Carlton Brewery. And then she had to like go get the key and she got my wallet and then, oh, I felt awful. And what I'm concerned about is, and also I lost my phone four times on Friday in my own house. Thank God Reese found it for me three times. Four times in my own house. I'll just put it shit down. I don't know what I'm doing. It it's, it's must be some kind of disease in my brain. Because I talk and I'm like thinking about shit and I'll start doing one thing and I'll probably, I'll just put my phone down clearly. Sometimes I'll just throw it. I'll just be like, ah, I'll just chuck it on the bed. And I'll just throw it because I'm like, oh, I've got to do this. And I'll do something else. And I'm like, all right, what's next? What's next? I'm like, oh, I need to call so-and-so. So I like go, all right, I need to call someone. So I need a phone for that. Where's my phone? Fuck. And then I'm looking for my phone for 20 minutes. And then Reese is like, it's here. And I'm like, thank you because I, I apparently can't even find shit. So what I'm mainly concerned about and is just what's going to happen to me as I age. This is 24 years old. Like, I, this is me in supposedly the prime of my life. And I can't remember my personal belongings. Imagine this with full-blown dementia. That is n not a situation... Because uh, who knows? I won't even be able to remember, like, w like how to breathe at, at that point. Because I'm, I'm declining rapidly. I used to be, I've always been pretty bad with that stuff. I was always like the kid that would leave my jumper at places and my old mom and dad would have to drive back or I left my footy boots in the club rooms. I did do a bit of that growing up, but it, not to this point. Not like three times in a weekend plus the added bonus of losing shit around your house constantly. During COVID, it, it, yeah, I think my brain died. I, I think I need to start doing brain exercises just to like spice things up in there. The stuff that's not just how to do comedy because that's all I think about. I'm like different aspects of comedy, organizing show, doing show, doing podcast, organizing podcast. Is this my, my, my brain's just in this fucking loop all day and it just goes between like the same 10 to 15 things and not one of those things is be responsible for your personal belongings. Anyway, guys, so I forgot to talk about that because of course I did because I don't remember shit. And what I really need, guys, is three weeks off. I think I'm going to have three weeks off after Christmas and I need it. I think I do. So I may not do this podcast for just the New Year's period. I might have two weeks off this one, but we'll see. Um, I think I need a break. I'm, I'm actually going to try and go on some some sort of a getaway. Not sure where, but I, uh, I'm excited about it. And I feel like maybe it's just the time of year. I might be being too hard on myself because there's probably a lot of people right now that are just... Yeah, I'm just trying to wrap up the year. And it's a busy time, but I'm not coping. I haven't done my Christmas shopping. I'm... Oh, dude, you know what the problem is? We're working all the way up till Christmas. Like, um, we're going to spend December 24th trying to finish off the loogies because it's on the night before. Like, I'll be, like, the, I'll be, my first day off will be Christmas morning. And fuck, I'm excited. Oh, obviously excited for Santa and shit, but like mainly to just sit in a couch and not have to think about anything. So, um, anyway, guys, vent's over. My rant's over. I forgot what I was about to say. Awesome. Anyway, that's typical. <laughs> Goodbye. I need a sleep. Adios. Lukekitchen.com slash magic. Goodbye. Someone.